thanks to the supporters of channel member David Markon. Here we go then, folks. This is likely to be the last week of non-lead to legend FM21 edition. So strap yourselves in. Hope you enjoy the ride. This time next week, we'll have something a little bit new. Just a little new. And then the week after, Born in the USA starts. That's the plan at the moment. But for now, hope you enjoy the rest of this series. Hello and welcome to Club 3, part 28 of non lead to Legend. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have our Champions League first knockout round, first leg game against Napoli. And then we also go away from home against our title rivals, Manchester United, in the Premier League. Since you were last with me, we've played through the whole of January and remained unbeaten the whole time. We did have a little bit of a three-game wobble where we drew um, with West Ham in the Carabao Cup semi-final um, and then Burnley in the league, then West Ham again in the league um, but we managed to turn it around when we played West Ham again in the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final we did manage to knock them out and everything looked good until we then lost to Sheffield United but we recovered we have a win over Everton and that's the important thing so this is what the Premier League looks like remember this is what it's all about we want to win the Premier League this year and it's very much a three horse race with 12 games to go we're on 66 points. Manchester United on 50, on 63 points, but with a much better goal difference. Uh, Chelsea on 62 points. And then there's a massive gap back to Man City on 48, Liverpool on 46. So there's only three teams in it. We're one of those three teams. And we're going to be a little bit clearer about how in it we are after we've been to Old Trafford and hopefully beaten Manchester United. That's the plan. But that's the plan for the second half of the episode. First, we need to navigate our way or start navigating our way past Napoli in this home leg. Um, so we're going with Morau in goal, a back four of Rashevsky, Brand, Asante and Remy, Chavalski and Rengifo in midfield, Magno, Miliaccio and Camera supporting Joyce up front. Um, Jack Joyce is one of the top scorers in the Premier League now. I feel completely vindicated in bringing him in and favouring him. Um, we did turn down a move from Inter Milan to let Liam Delap go there on loan for the rest of the season. I think in any other season, I'd probably let him go. Um, but this is this is the season we're trying to win it all. It's the last season we need to keep him in. The last thing I want to do is loan out Liam Delap and then have Joyce pick up an injury. So um, Delap will stick around, or he is sticking around. The transfer window is closed now. Um, but we are hoping for big things from Joyce for the rest of the season. His former Peterborough strike partner, by the way, Ricky J. Jones, has now gone to play in the MLS, having not scored a goal for Peterborough in two years. It's not just me who abandons former Premier League Golden Boot winners. Um, I think he scored 24 goals in that first season in the Premier League and has barely played since because sometimes, sometimes you just forget about how many goals a striker has scored and just drop them based on Kev things. It wasn't even me who did it. Uh, Joyce with the opportunity from the edge area. It looked like he was fouled there, but apparently not. Um, Camera gives it back to Javowski. It goes all the way back to Asante. I mean, now Rengifo forward to Camera, um, who's got Remy there on the overlap. He uses him. Remy plays the ball back to Rengifo. I was about to criticise it, and then I realised he was setting it up onto Rengifo's left foot on the edge of the area. And the longer that boy is in our team, the clearer it becomes he has one of the most magical left foots in the history of football. Left foots, that's right. We don't say feet around here. What a strike from Rengifo. First time on the half volley. And he puts us 1-0 up after 13 minutes. We are at home in the first leg because we managed to not win our group despite Barcelona being in it, who we like to beat regularly. Um, but we, So we are in the home leg first. So we've got to be aware of them getting forward and grabbing an away goal. Um, that could then be problematic in the return leg. Uh, like I've said many, many times before, you don't win these Champions League ties in the first leg, but you can lose them. So we're looking for we're looking for two or three goals. That would be nice. Uh, more importantly, we're looking not to concede any. Uh, Killian Remy has just grabbed our second inside 20 minutes. So and at 2-0, um, I'm feeling pretty good. The important thing now is to not let Napoli back into this game. This is a well-worked goal. Uh, Remy throws it to camera. Camera just turns, plays it into Miliaccio. He cuts it back to Remy, who's just started that run as soon as the throw left his hands. It, it looked planned. We've obviously been working on that on the training ground. I don't go near the training ground because I don't own a tracksuit or any boots. Uh, but the, the rest of the staff have obviously been working on that with the boys. And I appreciate it. Camera doing some good pressing. 
um, to keep Napoli under pressure there. They're trying to get the ball clear, but they just they can't get a moment to to look up and pick a pass. And they're resorting to just lumping it forward and giving it straight back to us. And it's now camera out on the right-hand side, running at the left-back, gives it to Remy on the overlap again, who cuts it back to camera. Miliaccio's in acres of space, and it's 3-0 after 23 minutes. And we are looking like a team that's going to win the Champions League again. This is an excellent performance. Make sure you save some of this for Manchester United, boys. Remember, we need to win the Premier League this year. It's not just about the Champions League this time around. But, I mean, I think we're, the, the debate we had after winning the Champions League just once and not ending the series was you can't just win the Champions League once and call yourself a legend. That doesn't work. What if we win it back to back without winning the Premier League? Am I a legend then? Yes. Yes, I'm a legend then. And contrary to what some people seem to think, the series has never been about becoming a legend at one club. Um, I don't need to get on Arsenal's legends list. I need to I need to satisfy myself. that I've had a career that I would be happy with. And now I'm going to take my retirement, buy a Winnebago and uh, just go about the place enjoying the riches that I've earned. That's pro probably not what I'd do. But, you know, it's an option. It's all about options. That's what we're looking for here. Joyce plays it across the camera. It's 4-0. We're getting to the point where it doesn't really matter if Napoli score because we're so rampant that we're going to have the game out of sight before it even gets to that point. I said earlier in the match that you don't win the tie in the first leg, but you can lose it. I think the boys are trying to prove me wrong. How many goals do they have to score for us to declare ourselves the winner of the tie in the first leg? I reckon if we get up to seven or eight, then there's probably no coming back from that for Napoli. Um, but it's 4-0 as we approach half-time. It's been an excellent performance so far. And off the back of that, we do need to start looking in terms of fitness levels and having players ready to play Manchester United at their place in just a couple of days' time in what arguably is an even bigger game than this one, certainly as this one seems like it's relatively straightforward and job done already. Uh, Rengifo playing it, playing it, playing it to black. Playing it back to brand. Learn to use your words, Kev. Mashevsky's in. And it's five after 49 minutes. And um, job done yet? Not, maybe not quite. We are As soon as anyone looks like they're starting to tire a little bit, they're coming off. Um, and we are just scoring at will. And probably more excitingly, not only scoring at will, but scoring with players from all over the pitch as well. Uh, both fullbacks have scored goals from open play, which is... Um, which is it's just it's just fun, isn't it? Just fun having fullbacks getting forward, scoring goals the way they are. I enjoy it very much. Morale just drops it, drops it to its own feet, plays it out to Brand, and we're just going to build from the back on the floor again. Um, Joyce tries to keep hold of the ball and actually doesn't do very good hold-up play there at all, but Brand is always there to just tidy up any kind of mess that comes his way. Camera playing it back to Brand again. Ringifo to Magno, to Joyce. This is sensational football. Ryshevsky on the overlap again, crosses to Joyce and Jack Joyce has a goal as well. And it's now 6-0. And that is just, it's just a very good goal. I think this is one of the best teams I've ever put together playing football manager. They play such beautiful football and uh, there's just talent oozing out of every area of the pitch. There's no weakness in this side now. They are, we, we talked about needing a world-class elite level striker. We got him, Jack Joyce. I know he's not here permanently, but if we were to do another season, which we definitely won't be doing, but if we were to do another season, we just throw everything at Manchester City to bring Joyce in permanently. That means giving them £250 million for him. That's what we do. We finish the squad off um, with a young striker who's going to score an absolute ton of goals for us over the years. It's the 25th of the season now for Joyce as we make it 7-0 in this first leg over Napoli. You can't win it in the first leg. I, okay, maybe you can. Maybe I'm going to be embarrassed tomorrow if Napoli end up knocking us out. But for now, uh, we're, we're good at football. Joyce just there, hands on hips. He's having a very splendid evening. And now we probably do need to just freshen some legs up a little bit and get ready for Manchester United. So camera can come off. João Pedro can come on for him. Uh, Magno can come off, Almada can come on for him. And I guess the uh, the final one, Rengifo will come off and Warren can come on. And we'll make those three changes. Um, we've got an XG of two and we've scored seven goals. We've had eight shots on target and scored seven goals. We have been absolutely clinical and ridiculous today. 
poor old Napoli don't know what's hit him. I've dropped a little bit of praise. If we can grab an eighth, then I'll I'll start to feel confident about uh, about getting through into the next round. I tell you what, if we win eight nil, I won't even bother showing you the second leg because it's so it's so over and done. It's seven nil. There's still a chance. Seven one. There's a big chance. But if we get to eight, then I will we'll just go straight through to the quarterfinals tomorrow and uh, keep the pace of the series going. Although we do have a Carabao Cup final, um, which I'm probably not going to bother showing you because it's only the Carabao Cup and who cares? Um, do you want to see the Carabao Cup final? I don't, I don't think you do, do you? I don't think you do. Um, I, I'm recording this a week in advance. Let's, let's be honest, you ain't seeing the Carabao Cup final because um, I don't care about it. I'll play a rotated team in it. It doesn't matter if we got there sort of by mistake and we don't care about it. It's 7-1 now, so you're getting the second leg of this because Napoli is showing signs of life at the end there. We said we didn't want to concede an away goal, but that's exactly what we've gone and done. If Napoli now beat us 6-0 in the return fixture, which is unlikely, but possible, we'll get ourselves knocked out in probably the most embarrassing Champions League exit since Barcelona got knocked out by us last year. There's a performance for the Jack Joyce doubters. Ridiculous. I mean, how much would it cost to buy him? Um, they are not willing to sell. Well, we'll see about that. I might make that my final gift to whoever takes over next. Before I retire, just make sure we confirm the permanent signing of Jack Joyce. Um, but for now, we take our eyes off of the pre uh, off of the Champions League for a moment and make sure that we can get three points against Manchester United in the Premier League. So no changes then for the Manchester United game. I don't know if you were watching. We just scored seven goals. I don't think we need to be making any changes. Uh, Liam Delap has had to drop down off the bench, though he picked up an injury in training. Um, we, we need to win this game. If we're going to win the Premier League, this is must win. Manchester United do seem like a very good side. They're lurking around behind us, just the three points behind, and their goal difference is so much better than ours. Mason Greenwood in this universe seems to be the best English striker of a generation. And that is a bit of a problem that we're going to have to find a way to deal with. Hopefully, Joe Chimbrand finds a way to deal with that problem today. But it is United starting things off, attacking down this right-hand side. And uh, there is that boy, Mason Greenwood, who now I've mentioned him, is probably going to be a problem for us today because that's usually how these things work. And we're not getting the ball here. This is like this is like watching the game against Napoli in reverse. And they were really struggling to get the ball against us. And we really struggled in that first minute or so to get anywhere near the ball against Manchester United. Hopefully it's not a situation that is going to continue throughout the game. Um, it's camera against camera today as well. Their left back is called camera. Our right winger, of course, is called camera. So hopefully our camera wins the battle of the cameras. Um, Asante playing the ball forward for Joyce, who brings it down, but is immediately dealt with by Tamori for Manchester United. Um, but we've got it back in our midfield and it's Remy trying to get some kind of overlap on this right-hand side. A camera's in space behind him if he wants to use him. Marcus Rashford tracking all the way back for the tackle. Um, but Chavowski's come out to join this overload on the right-hand side. And we're trying to work the ball into the area. Rengifo had charged forward, but we couldn't find him. And now it's Greenwood against Asante who makes him look not very good. Brand, I think, is coming across to have that covered, though. And we are going to need Brand to do a lot of covering today. Um, when stuff like that happens. It's an in-swinging corner from camera. At this near post, Magno's there and it's bundled over the line. I think it's being disallowed. It looked like the kind of goal that was probably a handball. Um, I think we're going over to a replay or a VAR. Um, it didn't It didn't take a clean hit straight into the back of the net, which is usually football manager saying handball or a foul or something. We're not even getting a replay from it. It was disallowed, though. That is a wild tackle from, I think that was Rengifo. Um, Magno nods it down to Joyce who rounds the goalkeeper does really well he's offside but Joyce looking very lively he'll have double reasons to want to score today of course as a Manchester United uh, Manchester City player he'll want to score against United but I imagine he also quite quite fancies winning a Premier League winners medal as well and with City back in fifth place in the Premier League as it stands currently this if we can't come to us permanently it might be his only chance to do it for a little while uh, Greenwood is in again there though for United and this is the problem we knew we were going to have a 30th goal of the season now for Mason Greenwood. It's only February. He is absolutely uncontrollable and um, yeah, problem, big problem uh, because we're now 1-0 down and have some ground to make up. Um, as it stands, this will put United top of the league. I'm just waiting for it to tick over. There's your confirmation because their goal difference is so much better than ours. 
a 22 goal advantage on goal difference. Um, and with 11 games to go after this one, this will leave us with a lot of work to do between now and the end of the season. If we can somehow find a way to grab a draw out of this, I will absolutely take a draw from this game because uh, at least then it leaves us top of the table. And being top of the table is nice when you're trying to win the league. Um, right, 1-0 down at half time. We are looking for performances from somebody, from anybody. We're also looking at fitness levels. Nobody's really putting in a shift yet today. We're going to ask for... We're, we're not going to ask for more. We're going to demand more. Um, I'm looking at my bench. I know we've got João Pedro. We've got Neo. See, this is where I'd love to be able to bring Liam Delap on. Uh, Miliaccio's tired, so Almada can come on for him, like the, like the dugout is saying. That's a fairly easy decision to make. Uh, Rui Camera is also tired, so Pedro can come on for him. Um, I'm probably going to leave Rengifo on, though, just for his free kick delivery. And you know what? We are going to take off Joyce, and we're going to go with Omar Neo up front, and we're going to give him an opportunity to play as a striker. We spent a lot of money on him in the summer. Haven't given him many opportunities to play up front. This is his chance to make himself a hero in an Arsenal shirt. It is Manchester United, though, with the uh, with the throw, and I think we've fouled them as they've come through there, but we've got away with it, and Brand scrambles it clear, but only as far as a Manchester United player. And we are we are really struggling to get anything going today. Remy with the throw, looking for Pedro. It's a very strange clearance from the United defender, and it ends up with Ruszewski, who plays it across to Chavalski. And uh, Ren Gifo picks it up from Travalski, plays it over the top for Jao Pedro, who squares to Neo, and he has made himself a hero in an Arsenal shirt. In the 81st minute, Omar Neo, with the most important goal he's scored in his Arsenal career so far, it's Manchester United 1, Arsenal 1. That could be the moment that goes an awfully long way towards us winning this Premier League. Jao Pedro does brilliantly to cut it back. It all started from that weird, weird clearance that ended up with Ruszewski. Uh, between Rengifo and Travalski, they did very well to keep the ball moving. And if it all ends here, we should probably drop back to positive. We end the game can, with, our, with our three point advantage over Manchester United intact, knowing that it is still a case of win our final 11 games and we win the Premier League. It's as simple as that. Oh, right. Tomorrow's episode. What are we going to do? Let's plan this. Um, I'm, I really am not interested in showing you the Carabao Cup final or the FA Cup. Um, we could potentially do a North London derby and Napoli. That probably makes the most sense. Um, so we'll do Spurs away in the league and then the second leg of the Napoli game. And then fingers crossed the day after we're going to have the quarterfinals of the Champions League to look forward to unless something goes desperately wrong. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.